start um, and have you introduce yourself. And if you have any modality, uh, like healing or anything at all that you uh, specialty, I'd like you to write it on the side so people can contact you, but also introduce yourself and let us know what, what it is that you are offering or what you can do um, or uh, anything else that you'd like to share with the group. Um, did you have anything that you wanted to add, Phil? Uh, how did I get here? I, I think if we both say how we got here, it joins everyone else, doesn't it? Uh, how I got here is not, I have a lot of knowledge from past lives. Uh, I was a, a sorcerer on Atlantis in the Orion Belt where there used to be a planet and it exploded. And uh, that's where I get a lot of knowledge. I try and give it out if I can. Uh, I was also Merlin in another life. Uh, the Raphael part helped create Mars. Uh, I'm also being a commander of one of the ships out there. So, but I started healing when I was four or five. Uh, I was healing a goldfish. My hands went red. They've never done that since. And uh, I thought I was the only healer till I got credited uh, about 20, 20 years ago. Uh, but I do think that if you've got no boundaries to healing, you'll be a better healer. In other words, if you think it's not possible, you're blocking yourself. So everything is possible. So that's my little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, Phil. Can I just ask, um, when we was not on air, you had a, a, you were saying how to get rid of baggage. Yeah. Maybe now we're recording, you can go over that again. What, what happens is, uh, this isn't pre-planned, by the way. What happens is, a lot of times you heal someone, say, on the Monday, and they're fine on the Tuesday, they're fine on the Wednesday, and the Thursday, they'll start coming back. By the end, by the week, they're back to normal. And this is because people have got uh, either baggage they've got or they've got life, their life needs changing. They've got a lot of negativity and negativity uh, goes to the weakest point. So if you've got a bad back, within a week, you'll have a bad back. So it's changing point. The baggage part is when you've got memories from the past and you haven't told anyone. Uh, you've created like a little inside. It's getting bigger. Any negativity in your world feeds it. And is the baggage of your life, and it's best to just release it. And if you don't like anyone, even if it's family, it's good to try and undo that part because that creates baggage, and it also creates negativity ailments. If you if you have negativity in your head and it goes overflow, it goes to your weakest point. Normally, your bad back, your shoulder, your arthritis. It's to do with negativity. Has, has anyone got a question? No questions. I have one, Phil. It's Beth here. Hi, Beth. How are you doing? Um, could you explain that a little bit better? Like if you say you're in a family reunion and there's one sibling or family member that is irking you or bugging you, and of course you don't want to express it, you don't want to even feel it because this is family, right? What do you suggest? How do you, what's a good way to deal with that? How do you transmute that feeling or do you transform it? Do uh you? What do you do? I'll give you an example. Me and my daughter, my oldest daughter, are very similar and we will not back down. So we will not back down. So we argue and it won't stop and we dislike it. And whose fault is that? That's my fault. I'm a mentor. So I've ended up saying to her this year, look, I'm sorry for how I've been. I gave her a big hug. It's my fault. I should be the best. So the best way is to get friendly somehow and don't have any... Uh, Emosity about negatives. Try and get friendly. With. Get rid of that, you know, that role, that problem as best as you can. If they obviously you're a lot younger, you're the one to show them uh, as best as you can. it can be done. So, uh, I got my daughter crying in the car. She's 25 uh, because I saw the light, but it's my fault because I'm a dad. Uh, I, I should back down. Is that a good answer? Uh, hi, Beth. Can I say I heard somebody say once. Um, when you dislike someone, find one thing you like about them and then work on that one thing you like about them and then it helps you to dislike them and then you, you don't have that negativity towards them. I'm not saying that is the fix, but <laughs> I did read that somewhere uh, on someone's video. Um, so if you in a family circle and I find you find that person bugs you, but try to see that one nice thing that they've done or they've said to someone else, 
and then appreciate that and then it sort of takes that feeling away the negativity yeah it, yeah, I'm just saying that's one of my. No, that's not that. Both of those things are true. And that's almost the thing you have to remember, like in moments where you're being irked, just, yeah, just stop. <laughs> and be let, nice. let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> let it go. Be nice. There was somebody who was saying, I can't remember where I heard this, but they were saying how Jesus was a healer. His form of healing was he didn't do anything. He would just essentially see people in their most perfect divine state. And and just by being in that sort of presence would heal the person. And I love that. I think that's, I can't really define it exactly the way I learned it, but I love that concept. What I have found that um, when I don't like someone is whatever that characteristic is that I don't like is actually a reflection of me. There's something within me that is, you know, that negative characteristic or whatever, that trait, and it, it's in me, and I'm the one who needs to deal with whatever that is to understand it, release it, what have you. But that's kind of what happens with me when I, when I find somebody that I don't like, which is unusual. I like people, um, but every once in a while, you know, you get that person who just irks you you're like ah I, i've got i've got a, i've got a story about similar to that where when i was when i was very very young no one really gave me any love because they didn't know how to it wasn't they were i had horrible parents but their experience from when they were younger they didn't have it because they were in a big family but my sister who's seven years older did now i went through awakening and i saw myself having a bath and i was one with her in the dolls and i realized she was the only one who gave me so i phoned her and thanked her cry wow. as well i made her cry as well i made everyone oh. cry. <laughs> but it, it's that sort of sometimes it's experience of what your parents have had as well and it, it's like a you've got to be the one that says hold on no can stop this cycle of uh, negative they didn't have love, and that's how they think go ahead yeah. Kat. go ahead Kat. Unmute yourself, dear. There you are. Thank you very much. So, so um, this lockdown has been a period of massive reflection and shadow work for me. So my uh, one person that's challenging for me, Shelley, is my sister. We're completely in total opposite. And I did some ancestral healing where it doesn't matter how you do it, you just do it. Um, and I had to come to the understanding that the person she is is my teacher, my biggest teacher, because she's showing me all the things. It's almost like, what she's heard the way her life is, um, I wouldn't choose. I've had to, I've witnessed it, if you like, what she's been. Um, and in doing so, she's taught me how I don't want to, what I don't want to be as much as I want to. And I've had to do exactly what Phil said to find bits I like about her and try and heal that. And I've done a lot of transmuting and transforming. But it's been a huge year for me for 40 years more. I really we made complete and utter opposite de decisions and who she was. Um, but we are healing. It's a miracle, really, because I'm telling you that would never have, but it's, it must be something in me that I'm, I remember doing this ancestral healing and screaming at spirit going, how can I forgive her? <laughs> and I went, I forgive for that. So it's stopping long enough to go, what is it that, he, even if they're showing you what you don't want to be, it's as much to know what you want to be or who they are as what you want to be. And finding a middle, finding a middle. And almost thanking her because her life has been so hard. There's no way I could have endured her life. But I've been, she's one of the few people I can't send away. A friend who is annoying you. I'll see you in a few weeks, but my sister, I can't. So I'm, I'm being forced to face that right up and close. And it's how you view it. My perspective on it has changed. Like you, Phil, your perspective has changed. Mm. So you can heal then. You will, you're willing to hear it rather than fight it. Yeah. Anyway, that's been certainly. Can I, can I just say, yeah, thanks. Uh, just jump in for a second. At so at at so level before we took the, the avatar at the container, we were aware we were coming into a difficult experience, and sadly our memory was wiped when we left the womb, and then the game started, and we all know how to play this game. Like, and uh, we are all victims of someone else's circumstances. The reason I'm feeling this way is because of you. Really, is that right, Christy? Yeah, I'm feeling this way because of you. So we give our power away on a daily basis to something outside of herself. And we allow that situation to, to control us emotionally and sometimes physically. So when are we ready to wake up, really? 
That's the big question. I, I but it's, it's, no, yeah. it's known also that we've been to war with ourselves on an emotional level for most of this incarnation because the reality around us has given us a program to play with. And we all know what that program is like. It's called suffering. Right. So when we're ready to surrender and accept that, Christy, you are the problem. This is not about anybody else. You need to take that mark, that name off your head, Christy. You know that word we put across our head called victim? No, I, I get am that. A victim. First time ever, oh. I had to realize that between us, as you just said, we agreed to play that out. I, yeah. I have to forgive myself for choosing to play that out. I didn't understand yeah. that. It was like, she said, she said, did it. No, actually, we chose, and I have had the learning but it's taken me this long to understand yeah. that I have to take responsibility. You're right. I have to take responsibility. And, and I didn't, is, I wanted to blame her and it wasn't, it's both of us. Yeah. This is not directed at you, Kath. I'm just sharing this with the group yeah. and it's insight to allow myself also to understand that a lot of the times the biggest problem I have is myself. You know, I throw my toys out of the pram mm -hmm. and I get upset. And he allowed that to happen, like, you know, but it, there's wonderful experiences in that for us all, like, you know, and everything is about the experience. Everything we do is about an experience, which takes us into the next experience. But it's understanding that we're, we're, we play with ego in this reality, like, you know, and uh, a lot of us don't like the ego, but the ego, the ego can be a wonderful mentor to us all because it gives us options on a daily basis. What do you want to play with today, Christy? Is it a horror movie or a love story? It's entirely up to you. Makes Thank sense. you. I want to share um, this one. Uh, we had a, a very long healing session yesterday with uh, uh, a family that um, this young girl was a friend of this family and brought through. Uh, her brother is down and creator came through with a message for her that her brother was an angel and there was nothing to heal on with her brother because her brother chose to be down syndrome. Her brother came specifically to earth because Down syndrome children are high vibrational. They are always loving. Have you ever noticed that about Down syndrome children? They're just, their vibration is higher than, they're like, they're like the dolphin and the whale. They're pure love. So I want you to realize that every time you see a, a Down syndrome child, they're probably an angel, angel raising the vibration of this planet. Because Creator came through with this most beautiful message for this little young woman about her brother that just blew her away. I don't even remember everything because I get into this trance when I'm, when I'm um, working, but I just remember that one part that he's an angel and he's a higher, he's a high vibrational angel and he's here to hold the vibration of this planet, keep the vibration. And he's just like the dolphins. And I, I wanted to tell you this before I forgot, because once we get going, I'm going to forget this. And I never knew that about the down syndrome, but and he's telling me now that they're all angels. It's the same thing with autistic children as well. Um, autistic children are fifth dimensional children. So their vibration is, that's why they find this world very frustrating because their vibration they all, is yes, And they chose to, to, to come here. They're yeah, specifically yes, they keeping the vibration higher yeah. for us. Because if they didn't, can you imagine what hell we'd be in now? But the speed at which they think, that's why they get frustrated because it's like, why can't you? It's so easy. It's like breathing yeah. in and out. Why yeah. can't you get it? So they get that they vent because yeah. they're like crazy people. It's so easy, but for that because they, they're highly intelligent. But to cope on this density is way hard. So that's a wonderful thing to know that they ain't. Well, there's a lot of them. I mean, you're alone. I mean, in this group, we're not angels. Can I? A wonderful healer. Our temperament. We'd never be an angel. <laughs> <laughs> but I did want to share. Okay. Um, do we have any questions um, quickly on healing? And um, creator saying to me, uh, understand that all of you are healers, no matter, I mean, the modalities in introducing yourselves should not, all of you, everybody is our healer. Everybody can channel. Everybody has, um, will be telepathically able to speak to, you know, the angels and your, your guides. All of these things are opening up for you. The, the energies that are hitting the earth are, are, going to get stronger and stronger and they're coming there as we raise our vibration they're lowering their vibration we're going to be joining them soon and of course they say soon because they have no um no flashing messages about joining um, um it, it, they're 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 low they're lowering and we're raising our vibration so that they that we meet up soon so if they they say soon of course they have no 
time like we know. Okay. Um, so that's exciting, but I mean, they, soon to them could be five years from. Do you have questions? I think this month, I think this month is going to be particularly strong. Um, up until, is it the 9th of September is going to be quite significant? And again, at the end of September, it's going to be significant. So I think there is actually, you say five years old. I know you're joking, but I think. I am month, joking. I don't think it's. No, I know. Be. I know you are. So but what I'm saying is, I think September to December will be quite, not a volatile, but a very big change. Would you agree with that, Phil or Marlene? Are we going through it? Yeah. I Shall I get, now, now we're not getting many questions, so I'll give you a little tip. So it's just when you're hearing a patient, a lot of people either do panic, which is their own energy, own all, or or they'll do earth energy Look around the box. See what we've got. The burn can channel moonlight and water. The burn or uh, four eight tiers per motion, and then the higher they go, the more it is. So look around the box. Where you can either channel a certain energy, or you can channel it to the area. If you want to fix a bone, it's about eleven hundred hertz. It dead on the on where the crack is, so break and melt the bone. And uh, if you think it can't be done, any questions? Uh, yeah, start? Celia wants to. Uh, not on that. This is a new question. Since there aren't any questions for that. Celia wants to know, uh, um, she wants she wants to be a healer. And since we are inherently healers, we just need to know and ask for guidance. But is is this what God or source wants me to eventually, to do eventually? Or is this a preparation for something else? And Celia, it's what you, what finds your joy. You're the one that would like to be a healer. You want to go back to your home country and heal. And mm. that's mm -hmm. what the creator is saying to me is, it, this is your joy. This is what you want to do. It's not what he wants, it's what you want. And that's what he Free will. wants Free will. for you. Yes, that's what he wants for you. It's not what he Free wants. Will. If this is what you would like to do, then that's he wants you. He doesn't control you. You would like whatever whatever you would like, whatever finds would find your Thank you. So you end up what you need when not need. What you, what your guides are there for you to ask help. They can't do things unless you ask them. So if you want to go back to the Philippines and help your your home country let your guides know they can't help you unless you ask put them to work okay <laughs> everybody put your guides to work okay i, I want to go home yep tell them okay. you need the, you need the capabilities of going home you put them to work <laughs> <laughs> perfect thank you i have another question unless there's someone else who has something okay thank you um so uh Probably a year, no, longer than that, uh, a year and a half, two years ago, I found out that I was a fractal. Um, and at the time, I wasn't, I didn't know how to take that. Like, it was a huge, it's a gift, but I didn't know what to do with that. And um, I believe that I'm ready to kind of move forward with that, if that's part of my path. Might be, might not be, but I'm, I'm interested. Um, finding out more about that, how would I go about doing? Who's answering? Uh, <laughs> meditation. The, the one thing that I do, the, the, one thing that I do say, I've been Raphael. I've been a source on Atlantis. I've been Merlin, but I'm Philip here, and that's who I am. So I can use these as tools and they help Philip here. But I'm not making, I'm not tagging it or labeling it that big. It's good for the knowledge. So the best way is probably meditate and see what that factor can help you help Rhonda. Great. Thank you. I can... Rhonda. May I Sorry. add something? With that? Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Rick was just scanning Rhonda. I just wanted to see oh, okay. what comes up for her. <laughs> go ahead, Don. Don, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Um, I was going to add that uh, when I do any healing, what I would do would be to first off uh, get the the full, the full birth name of the patient and direct light to the patient via this. Are you are you are you do are, are you doing a scan? No, go ahead. Okay. Anyway, um, so when you have the full birth name of the individual, the potency of your blessing of light upon that person is more intense. You cannot really use a birth name of an individual, or sorry, not not use a married name. I should. Um, because the potency of the, the light being directed from source to that individual is lessened by a degree of so I would recommend whole birth grounding the yourself 
asking them to ground themselves. And then generally what I would do was golden light around the and remove pain. One of my techniques. And then I would, after the, the light is around them like a goon of light, I convert it to a liquid basically and have it absorbed into all cells immediately. And to this, I would again apply golden light to crown chakra and pulse it ground it by the grounding action uh flush any toxin in the body and restore the skeleton i just wanted to share that also another way of healing is by tapping your palm chakra and collecting the light restore it in the frequency don, to share that. don how do you do that how do you how do you tap your palm to do that you tap your palm it's simple. All I do is basically visualize two tulips with the petals open. I, in a visualization, I'm doing this entirely in a state of meditation, and I visualize the core of the Milky Way galaxy. I see the light in the core of them, and I bring it in the now into my palms. It only takes a minute. You know, I can do it, do it a lot sooner. It just depends on your ability. But you can literally see the light coming. You store it in your heart. And the frequency, as I say, of delivery can heal by touch, by just, and, and I recommend doing it small trickle. Um, I've done this for others. You can create almost like a tea kettle. One hand cupped in the up position, receive the light. And the other hand, I would place example. I have a, had a friend of mine in a, in a hospice and uh, it was nearing his time of his cycle. He was struggling with the cancer that he had. So I applied a little light to his crown chakra gently. I knew that it would be hungry for the, what I did was I poured it into his crown chakra. He was still conscious and he asked for more. He just raised his hand. He couldn't speak. He just raised his hand up for me to do it again. And I says, okay, just a little bit. And I did that. He passed about three or four, but he was, he was Sorry. having a tough time with his cancer to share that. But as, as I say, just do it gently, not, not in great streams. They don't need, it. but you can, you can also place it near the chakra of any organ. And using your intention and certain degrees of light, just apply the light to those organs and these organs. I am, I am not a proponent of organ transfer. I don't believe in that at all. Um, it comes from a living being in another living. It's not what I am about at all. Because you take from one life to get doesn't doesn't fit in my modality. Okay, that's all I have to say. Don, Don, you, your friend, do you mm -hmm. think you were giving him the blessing, the last rites, by mm -hmm. giving him the light, you were clearing him out? clearing it all to let him go it is an action that i have done to uh, ease the transition yeah okay it is not something i i normally would do but i just felt that i could do mm -hmm. uh I, I had no no training to do it i just had felt i could do it and so i gave it a try just gave it a shot i, I have actually done similar with a person who i can't and half mm -hmm. an hour later she died and mm -hmm. I, I realized I gave, I gave her the last, right? I cleared all, mm -hmm. everything, from, mm -hmm. and it, it's quite, it's good, but it's quite. Yeah, well, you, you, as I say, keep the patient grounded. Any negativity will be grounded mm -hmm. when it's flushed from the body. But just keep the golden light cycled through the body as you're doing this cycling of, of light, because everything mm -hmm. is about light. This, this is mm -hmm. a hologram on a grand scale. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, hi, Phil. Isn't that similar what I asked you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't like to go to the next, it's just like clearing. It's like giving them a last rites. And uh, what I did, I did it a bit different. I actually drew all the negativity out in the, and then I grounded it. So I did it slightly different. It'd be very simple. Hi, Drew. I don't know you. Um, can you introduce yourself and give us a little bit of uh, your modalities background? Because I noticed that you had said that you've done group healings fairly often. Hello. Can you can everybody hear me? All right. Uh, this is my first Zoom meeting. Um, yeah, I've been doing healing for, I'm 36 this year. I've been doing healing since I was about 28, since I had my first awakening experience. Um, I was, I guess, kind of spurred on to awakening by a member of my community, and he kind of taught me some ropes. And uh, then as I've then uh, moved to a different town, using some of his techniques and a lot of my own intuition along the way, um, recognize uh, Yahweh as my creator source and um when i've been doing yeah i wanted to talk about the group healings i've done and how they've been helpful or not as helpful um it seems like the more people that you have the harder it is to maintain your control on intention and so it can get a little bit a uh, little bit uh not really out of control but uh less focused um and then i've also done i like doing healings where maybe I'm on the head inputting the light and shedding 
the negativity out and repairing things along the way. And then when I have a, uh, a fellow healer on the feet grounding it out, um, that's always seemed to be a very, very helpful scenario where each person gets to focus on their thing, but they're working together. And, um, so uh, where where if I do it by myself and I'm you know starting at the crown and I'm focused on healing and grounding, uh, bringing in the bringing in the light and getting rid of the negativity where when I add another person in there, um, it seems like I'm able to get more focused and deeper into the healing itself uh, rather than uh, the grounding or uh, some of the more extraneous things that can, can be focused on by somebody else involved in it. So yeah, that's what I had. My, um, because Rickett, my husband is connected to source. Yeah. The white light actually came to him and healed him. Diabetes, heart disease, different age related uh issues that he had older um, and gave him the ability to heal people. He can walk through a room for people and all he sees is world healing and energy in the whole room. And inadvertently he's healing even trying. So that happens to him a lot. So it, it just happens mm-hmm. because he's, he's connected. And I, when we are actually doing sessions, he just has to scan a person. We have to see their energy physically but in Zoom or a photograph. He scans the picture and I actually get the download to see the inside of their body, see what, what source is doing. So it's like a colored movie. And then he'll bring their past life, trauma, any traumas that are causing the future. Their past lives are affecting this incarnation, their, their past incarnation, their, their angelic realm, things mm-hmm. like that. So that's, that's what has happened. So that's, we're a partner. That's very cool. Yeah, I love to see that happen. Yeah, okay. so it's it's like a movie playing in my head. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then I, I channel, that. and if somebody comes, I'll see. We also do it. We can see attachment or um, thought form, um, things like that if they're affecting the body. The only thing I did, we had a sneaky one. That's why I brought Phil in one time, an attachment after the body. As we scanned the body, it left the body and then jumped back in. So mm-hmm. I had to bring Phil. It was a pretty bad one because I can't see that. that. So Phil yeah. helps me at those. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the first, um, I would call it, I've done two two exorcisms. And the first one I did, I guess if that's what you call it, but um, the first one that I did, uh, I got the off of the person, but then I didn't, uh, you know, I was doing this all by intuition. So I didn't do, I didn't send it through the light. And I found out later that's, you know, the part I missed was moving it through to the other realm to be healed itself. And so um, on my next exorcism that I did, I did it in tandem with uh two other guys and uh we you know did a a large a big blessing prayer for ourselves and his house laid hands on her and uh i mean i could literally see this energy come out of the solar plexus and then i sent it through the light and that time it worked great you know it wasn't hanging around bothering anymore all the gut problems were quite amazing but the first time it was that she was looking in a mirror and this black orb was badgering her on her head you know so uh, I've done pretty much thing by intuition and learned along oh. the way. Thankfully, I've yeah. had, I've uh, learned from. <laughs> yeah. It, when you do what, when you do one to one, ask the spirit world to give you a few helpers to help you. So then yeah. you, it's not just one; it could be six. I've got five that help me, but I I tell them what to do. I, I do the work if you and uh, they they like they, they like to heal they passed on and they would like like to heal so they're great to come down and then the patient sure say, the patient says there was six hands on us <laughs> china ex- i just say oh it must be a coincidence but it's quite funny <laughs> and they're just energy you know i mean everything is energy they're just energy mm. and if you're um so there's really nothing to be scared of uh, regardless if it's an entity or, you know, a possession or attachment, a wayward, it doesn't matter. It's just energy. And um, they like to play around. They like to play with you. And so I have, if you just, you know, respect energy and, you know, time for you to, time for you to go. Sometimes they're a little bit difficult. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I use like, you know, Archangel Michael, Raphael, I mean, Whatever happens, mm-hmm. I've, I've done a couple um, for people, and um, actually myself as well. And uh, so, so I've I've been got it, got it going down, got it going up. So yeah. I can add something to that. I've had. I, the, I wanted. To, I was going to call on you anyway. So if you can, after you're done, can you let everybody know who you are and what you do? I'll start with that. I am. Um, I'm here because I don't really even know if I'm a healer. 
the what I, I am a facilitator. Um, that moniker better. I like that label, like a facilitator or a guide. I use um, what do we call it? the hypnosis, regressive hypnotherapy, of the way of um, helping people directly. I try to be what what we were speaking earlier. <laughs> Just try to be nice. <laughs> See the good in everybody, bring what I can to every situation um, and just of myself, whatever environment I'm in. But in terms of healing in a really conscientious way and actually taking people on is um, is challenging to me because I don't really go out and find people. Strangely, they come to me naturally and I'm doing a lot of hypnosis, which has been sometimes very successful, sometimes you know, more, a little more confusing, which is why I love this group, because I'm always asking and exchanging advice about when you, you, you confront entities. This is where I get shaken because I do tend to doubt myself a lot. So thank God I have a really good um, team, spiritual team, where I'm constantly checking in. Is this right? Is this not right? What's going on? And I use muscle testing. And muscle testing is a form of like saying yes or no with your fingers. I don't know if everybody's familiar with it. I use this system. And um, over over the years, it's become my for healing, um, for, for dealing with my own doubts and, um, and getting in touch with my intuition. And I've had experiences, um, Drew, where I couldn't get rid of entities. And it really kind of rattled me because I wasn't sure what that meant, if I did something wrong. And the end result was um, my lesson was to learn that sometimes it's not, it's not ready to go. You know, and then there's more work to be done and um, and to accept pretty much every circumstance. And of course, when you guys talk about really evil entities and the scary ones, like you just said, Deb, where you called on Phil. Yeah, there's that happens. And there's moments where, you know, you do have to call on the big guns. (laughs) And one trick, this is a beautiful thing I learned from another healer is when um, often I'm dealing with a, a negative entity or, or just a, um, a being who does, does not want to leave the person I'm dealing with, you know, like an attachment that's really sticky. A friend of mine suggested, or I heard, I watched her and I do, copy her now, where she called upon the angelic chorus and she asked them to sing. And it's amazing when you call this on, And of course, I use my imagination, you know, I can't always really literally hear the angelic song, but I can imagine and it's almost physical. I've seen um, clients of mine, you can almost see this like awakening, this like just heard something (laughs) and it's beautiful. So I'm passing that on to call on the angelic um, song, the angelic chorus to help you in moments where you're a little bit stuck or you need a little extra (laughs) help. (laughs) <laughs> okay that's perfect um yeah, yeah. so tell, tell them about my grounding and healing technique with the atlantis what do you think halo the halo technique? yeah halo. for 10 20 years i used to have a cylindrical crystal in my head and someone said that's an halo for grounding and what happens it's a white light that goes above your head mm-hmm. and when, when you're grounding it goes like uh with it being america i'll do it in it. four inches down to four inches down to the mm-hmm. color will change depending if you've got an attachment red it's basically burning it burning it off you and it Mm -hmm. goes all the way down to the ground and when it goes to the ground just bring in moonlight but it's a good way you can actually use that to clear entity but try it a lot of people said it worked really well and i use this this even got rid got got rid of a demonic attack on so it's it's a a, like a circle like a double your halo and it's in white. It's bright white. It can change to yellow if you need calming down. It can change to blue angelic. But it goes to four inches down, two inches, and you got to do it by visualization. If you can't visualize, do it by intent, and that that and you can actually do it in healing. You can if your patient's got anything. Try the halo effect. And okay. It, it, it's a quick way. You, you don't have to like clear anything. It will clear it. How long does that take you, Phil? Uh, about not a lot. Okay. Yeah. But, but you, you do see the change. If you're good at visualization, when I saw it red first time, it, what does that mean? 
And uh, I was told is uh, you had an because I had a, uh, a demonic attack and detachment. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad it left it on there because yeah, I was taught exactly what it was. So I only mm-hmm. thought it was white or yellow. I didn't know. So I just mm-hmm. thought I'd give you that. But try it anyway. It's a wonderful. Instead of grounding, we're using the tree and all the negative your roots. It's a better. It's very hard to actually bring down because attachments try and clear. So okay. This Thank you, Phil. That's a good one. I have tried it. I love that one. Yeah. And I have. Um, Okay, I have some, I just want to put this out there with a group because if any, I don't know really, uh, it's not anybody I had that has asked me to help them. It's a sister-in-law who I uh, recently returned home to the United States. And so I'm going to dinners with my family and I'm getting all together and having all these beautiful reunions. And I know, I think my sister-in-law is bulimic and there's all this anger agitation around food when we're all together and you know and then I go to the bathroom and I can smell vomit and it's just like I don't know what to think about this and I don't know what it means and like what if anybody has any insight I I'm kind of like um I don't know what to do in this situation. I like, should I? I can tell you that creator is telling you, you can't do the step back. Yeah. You well, take, this is not your baggage. Mm-hmm. Stop. Stop. He's, he's like this. <laughs> but it's family, you know, when it's family and my niece is and my nephew and my brother who's married, you know, it's functional. And when we get to eat, it's a different dynamic. It's not like a joyful family thing. There's all this anguish and like, it's weird <laughs> to think they about know. it. They know. Okay, so anybody... It, oh, if yeah, you so noticed whatever, it, they noticed it. It, it. But if you notice it, they notice it. And if you say something that's going to alien... They're going to all think, what a no, bitch. I don't, what a bitch. Yeah. How I dare know, she I'm come home? Talking. How dare she come home and start criticizing our child? <laughs> put, put, put some music No, on. it's not the child. It's my sister-in-law. This is Okay, like how dare she come home and, and criticize my sister-in-law? That's exactly, exactly. they're all going to point. It's going to be your fault. <laughs> yeah. Let, you, you, need to, you need to be, you need to, you need to just be neutral and mm-hmm. stay back. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, right. you have to be neutral in this. They know, they know they have to handle this. Them. You have to just, all right. I'd be very happy. I'm so happy with you. Yeah. you know, yeah. Give them love, give them love, send her love and, and, and healing. That's what you do from afar. You cannot do this. As soon as you start in, in your nose and you're the, you yeah. can't control them. That's not your job. Okay. That's good advice, Deb. I appreciate that. It's not coming from me. Well, whatever for, from source. Thank you. <laughs> it's from creator. Yeah, as soon as you here. do that, they're going to, they're going to come after you. It's, this is, we do this as women think we, it, it's our job to, because you have been away. Do you understand? Oh, I'm going to heal them. I'm spiritual. I'm, I know what I'm doing. I'm awake. Let me, let me heal you. <laughs> no, they know that they know what's going on with her. All you're going to do is enter. we have to try and do this from afar. We're not God. We are God. They don't, but they're going to think who are you are the, you are wrong. You'll be, you're, you're the, you're divisive. When you, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't heal people without permission. Well, yeah. If she comes to you and says, hmm. okay. And in that case, what do I do? Has anybody had experience with this? If I do, if I am asked to help? Yeah, well, it's awake and healing. The type of people, somebody you trust. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Good yeah. advice.